Now, let's go back to uh, Lorenzo's story and uh, let's see why uh, the ballad was adapted to Scottish culture. First of all, uh, again, we have to talk about Sweden because uh, this version of Lorando was influenced by a Swedish ballad, which is not the Lillen Testamenta, which is the, uh, uh, the, the Swedish version, but uh, it comes from another ballad, which is Kung Olaf, uh, Re Olaf, King Olaf. Okay? Uh, what happens in this ballad that we sing in all the languages of Europe again? In Italy, for example, Kung Olaf becomes Re Gilardin in Piedmont, or Anzolin, Re Gilardin. In France, Le Roi Renaud. In Spain, El Comternau, etc., etc. So we have this ballad in all the languages of Europe again. Uh, what happens in this ballad? Uh, King Olaf, King Olaf, in, in the original Swedish version, goes to the forest, to the Greenwood. There, in the forest, he meets a fairy, una fata. And the fairy proposes him a marriage. He says, oh no, I cannot marry you, I'm already married, so I will not accept your invitation. If you don't marry me, I'll kill you. <laughs> and then he, and he says, no, I mean, I am faithful to my wife, and I don't want to marry you. The fairy hits him on the shoulder, and then she says, you will not live more than three days. He goes back home to the mother, and then we have the last conversation with the mother. He says, mother, make my bed soon. I'm going to die, but don't tell my wife that I am dead. Mm -hmm. This is just about the story. So, in the Italian version, we have, so I went for dinner, okay? In the Scottish version, we have, where have you been, Loranda? Good as a Where have you been, Loranda, my son? Where have you been? I've been at the Greenwood. You see the difference? I've been at the Greenwood. The same as King Olaf. Mother Magma Betsun, the same as in King Olaf. For I'm weary hunting and fain will I do. So I'm tired, and you know the story. Uh, then we know that Lord Randall met a girl in the forest. That girl is not his girlfriend, but a fairy. A fairy who looks like uh, his girlfriend, but actually is not his girlfriend. The girl he, he meets is a fairy. The fairy is there to defend the Greenwood. Why I say to defend the Greenwood? The Greenwood is not just a place in the forest. I mean, it is a place in the forest, of course, but it is a magic place in the forest. Uh, for the Swedish Greenwald, Greenwald, Greenwood. Uh, what is special about the Greenwood? In the Greenwood, you could meet fairies and elves, Fate Delphi. What happened to King Olaf, who went to the Greenwood? The Greenwood. Uh, the Greenwood. In the Greenwood, there is the entrance to the world of the dead, Mondo dei Morti, the world of the dead. For the people in the north, on Halloween night the dead come out from the Greenwood. So, uh, if you go to the Greenwood, you know that the dead are there, so you respect the place. You are silent, and of course, you do not hunt, because if you hunt, it's a catching, if you hunt, you don't respect the Greenwood, you don't respect the dead. Lord Randall went to the Greenwood for hunting, so we understand that he did not respect the dead. He did not respect the green wood, the magic wood. And the fairy punished him, and she offered him poisoned eels to kill him. That's why Loranda must die. He must die because he did not respect the green wood. So here we have, if you like, the meeting of two different ballads. So two, two ballads are interwoven. I mean, uh, you put together two different stories. King Olaf from Sweden and Il Testamento della Velenato from Italy. You put them together and you have Lord Randall, which is half Italian 
and half Swedish. But this is typical of the world of ballads, uh, to put together some stories. Uh, just to have an example that everybody understands. You know the ballad Bella Ciao? Right. Okay. Can I? Okay. Yeah, Bella course. Ciao is an example of three ballads put together. Uh, for example, Una mattina mi sono svegliato comes from Canto delle Mondine. Una mattina mi sono svegliato in Visalia mi tocca andare. So this, the first verse comes from Canto delle Mondine. Bella Ciao 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 comes from a song for children. Another ballad, La Bevanda Sonnifera, in which we have La Mia Nonna, La Becerella, La Mia Dis Ciao, La Mia Ciao, La Mia Dis Ciao, 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 and even the music. So they take the music and uh, Ciao, Ciao, Ciao from a song for children. It was like this, La Mia Nonna, La Becerella, La Mia Ciao, La Mia Dis Ciao, La Mia Ciao, Ciao, Ciao. And <laughs> Ciao, Ciao, Ciao is because the children used to do like this with their hands. Uh, the verse, uh, Tutta la gente che passerà, Dirà che eh, è, la, è la tomba del, del partigiano che è morto per amore, comes from a ballad in Languedoc, uh, medieval ballad. Tots la gente che passeranno diranno chi è una bella tomba, la tomba del figlio del re che ne è morta alla sbattaggio. This is Languedoc, mm? the old language of France. This is a medieval ballad, 13th century, XIX secolo. From these verses you have tutta la gente che passerà dirà that is a very, very old song. So you put all these together and you make up a new ballad, a new song. So taking from popular tradition. Everybody has copied from popular tradition. Beethoven has copied from popular tradition. Uh, Schubert, for example, Schubert. Uh, Schubert, you know Schubert? Uh, Schubert is a very famous German composer. Schubert took this King Olaf, in a translation in German, which became Erzkönig Tochter, la, la figlia del re degli Elfi. The same story, and he adapted the story to his music. And even today, you can sing Erzkönig Tochter, or if you like King Olaf, in German, and it has become a very famous uh, composition by Schubert. So this ballad from Sweden, that we sing in Italy, Regina Ardin, is a very famous composition by Schubert. You see how important ballads are, right? And important for our culture.